Hello, hello, it's Melinda. I want to take a moment to welcome all the new subscribers. And today is load 1017 day two. And today's prompt is I've got a secret to successful adulting. The prompt makes me think of schedules and whatnot. But what came also to mind is my husband, he has taken out a challenge to run every single day and he's over a year. I don't know the date yet. I have a text out to him to ask him the exact date, but why I thought of that when I was thinking of schedules is that no matter what, no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what day it is, if it's a holiday, whatnot, he takes time to run at least a mile. And that takes a lot of scheduling. So I happened to be looking through albums the other night with my kids and this, this layout stuck out to me. It is actually in my husband's album. Coincidence though. And the chevrons, I don't know if you can see that. It's still in a page protector. But I have smaller chevrons, larger chevrons, and they're sewn down. Those are all with vellum on white. And I have this interactive pocket here that has all the journaling in there. And it's just cut out of the backing material to match. So if you didn't really know that it was there, it kind of looks just like the layout. Um, only done because my the way I do hidden journaling normally is with on a tag behind the photos, but these three photos were so tiny with not a lot of layering that I couldn't stick anything behind them and make it look right. So I devised this to make it work for me. Same kind of way, just the tag matches everything. But this design grabbed my attention. So I'm going to kind of sort of scrap lift myself. And then I'm going to use some chevrons in rows. But it's going to be a little bit more grungified. And not so white and tidy and neat and whatnot. Um, I've spent some time figuring out the chevron pattern and I decided that I'm going to do each side a different pattern and that's about the size I want them. I've printed two photos because I don't quite know. This is full color, this one, and this one is 50% color. So I, um, in my silhouettes, no, not my silhouette, I'm sorry, in my Elements software, I have taken the photo to black and white, and then the opacity for the black and white is at 50%. I'm not sure which one I like better. I decided I would figure it out once I got the papers picked. And this is the color scheme that I have picked. Blues, greens, oranges. That's kind of, orange is kind of my husband's favorite color. And he often wears orange and blue together. So those two colors were natural for me to think of when I think of him. The green was picked coincidentally because there's lots of greenery around him. But I picked this paper here that kind of had a lot of the colors in it that I wanted. This paper, this paper and the polka dotted paper is from a Heidi Swap pad called No Limits. It's from a 2013 paper line she had. This is a scenic route from an eon ago. Let's see how long does it actually have a date. It's one of the strip ones, but I like this one. Uh, it doesn't have a date on it, but scenic route has been gone for quite some time, so. And this is 
a six by six paper pad. I believe this is basic gray, but I could be wrong, but it was in my scrap stash. So that's what I think I'm going to do, but I'm not going to make you watch me cut all of these because I'm going to hand cut these. Just lay this on basically and trace it and cut them. I don't know how many I'm going to need and I'm not going to do the whole page. So I'm going to be putting it on this tannish gray zigzag background. I didn't want white. It's out of a paper pad. Oh, it's out of a Project Life paper pad, actually. Uh, Midnight Edition. That's what it's out of. But I thought that the tan was a nice neutral from the gray and would go with all the colors that I picked. But that's what I'm thinking. So I will pause here, cut all these little papers because, again, that's going to be very time intensive and I may not get it done in one sitting. And I'll come back when that's done and kind of show you what I did. Thank you. Okay, I have cut them all. I have lots of extra. And I've stuck them down temporarily. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to sew maybe a zigzag down the centers and see where that gets me. I added some down here. My plan is to put the photos up here, so some of these are going to be covered up, but that's okay. Sorry, my dog's going upstairs, so sorry for the noise. And I still haven't decided on which photo I'm going to use. I think I like the darker one better, but we'll see. I might even just use them both just because I have printed them. Um, all right, I'm going to go sew this, and I'll be back to show you. Okay, I've just done a messy zigzag on them. I guess it's not too messy. I think the machine did it, and it's pretty uniform. I left the outside kind of free, and it did miss some, like this didn't even get sewn, but that's okay. We're going to go with it. Um, I'm going to stick you on fast forward now so you can see. I'm going to put a little pile up here, probably a little pile something down here, maybe the title here, some journaling, that kind of thing. All right. We're going to start off by cutting all the ends off we don't need. I'm going to lay the photos up there. I need to secure a couple of those down because they were kind of sticking up. I didn't realize I wasn't going to sew them down until I was sewing and decided not to. These are 4x4 four four frames from We Are Memory Keepers. They came with an album. And I thought these two frames, the colors of them, would work great as layers. Not sure where I went there. I know I'm going to pull some tissue paper. Um, this is from my husband's running shoes. They come wrapped in this run happy paper. They're from a Brooks brand of running shoe. And I don't save every one he buys because he buys a lot of shoes. I think uh, running is equivalent to scrapbooking for a hobby in price. Let's just put it that way. Um, so I just took three layers of that, wrinkled them up, and stapled them together just for the background. Whenever I seem to do a running layout about him, I try to use this paper up. This is just uh, plain Jane coal sprinkles. I'm going to roll it off. It soaked in pretty well because this is just um, pattern paper, so it soaks in fast, but I wanted to make sure. These stars were laying on my desk from a layout that you will see a video on in this month yet. So it's a secret layout so far. But they were just laying on my desk, so I thought I'd try to use them up. They're kind of a off-white with a 
gray lettering on them. I, I think I need some more on the photo, so I'm going to grab my big circle punch. I think they're three and a half and three inch, and I want to create a ring, but I did it wrong. So I'm first going to punch the small one and then punch the big one, and that creates a ring. Also creates uh, some extra three inch circles that I might have to use in a different layout. I'm going to do three of them. I'm going to put one down here to run off the edge and one more up in the photo cluster. It just kind of adds some, I don't know, some softness to the hard straight line of everything else going on. These are also on my desk. They came in the mail the other day. They're from Colorcast Designs. She had a sale, a moving sale, and I was picked up some of these. They're kind of aqua color. They kind of remind me of sea glass. So I decided to use a few of the, the stars. This is some embroidery, upholstery thread, I'm sorry. I used it to do the stitching. It's a little bit thicker. My machine doesn't love it, but I use it for that way. It also, when you wrinkle it up, when you wind it up, it kind of stays in, in the circle shape. So I like using that when I put thread on my layouts. These are some more color cast design stars that I've had for a little while. And I decide I don't need that other cluster. And I'm going to use a white stars with that. And I'm going to work on the title. I first grab this daily flash and I spell, first I spell steak and then I spell streak. I like the color, but I'm a little nervous that it's going to just get lost where I plan on putting it. So, yeah, if I'm going to put it down there, I just think it's going to get lost. So I have the same exact font in black. So I'm going to try it in the black and see which one I like better. The only bad part is, is once I take these stickers off, they don't like to stick back on. So more than likely I will end up losing them before I can use them. So I like the black better. It stands out. I know my journaling is going to be in a black pen, so I figure that with the black splatter, um, the, the black words and the black journaling, I'll have enough black to spread around the layout. And these are just some tile stickers from my mind's eye, I believe. I got a bunch of them when we did uh, Peach Jeep had them. I try to stay away from Peachy Cheap because I tend to buy multiples that I don't need. Good for them, not good for me. So it's just going to say the streak. And while I'm at it, I'm going to glue these down. I'm debating on whether I'm going to leave that like that. I'm thinking that I need another black thing, so I'm going to get a black tab so that there's black by the photos. There is some black in the photos, so that will work. And eventually I'll put the date of the photo was taken, because the photo is a different date than when I took what, I, what I'm writing the journaling about, so I just wanted to date that. Because these are squirrely little frames, I need like, like a base to stick everything to so that I can do this. At least I think I do. So that to me seems to work. And I'm just going to glue the back of this really well and stick it right over the loose rings and the thread and hope everything stays. I'm going to just push the tissue paper into it. And, oh. Almost a mishap. Thank goodness I had two on the same photo. I'm going to pop the top photo up on some foam. I'm going to use some score tape to stick it because my ATG gun does not like the foam. I'm going to use my 
Tombow Mono to glue down the rest of the stars. Cut the ring off. And with that, I'm going to pause and go take a shower and run my errands. And I will come back to do the journaling. And here I am. I first write it in pencil and then I go over it with a permanent marker. And it says, since January 1st, 2015, you have ran at least one mile, but usually more every day, no matter what. You have been out of the state, out of the country, sick, overly busy, and despite how ticked I can get when we have plans, you manage to keep this streak for a thousand five days. Wow, what a streak that is. So I'm going to show you some live close-ups. Oh, almost. I forgot. I'm going to put the date on. And I just write picture 2014 on it. It was from one of his races. And now I'm going to show you live close-ups after I fix the tab that suddenly came loose. Not loving the adhesive that came with my new ATG gun. Doesn't like to stick. So here's some slow close-ups. And my messy journaling. Keeping it real, I guess. There will be some still shots at the end. I want to thank you for watching. Bye.